Hey there friends, Nibs again. Out here in the garage today, doing a little bit of goofing around. We have a wet and rainy, raw day going outside. It's actually uh, not too bad, but it's uh, too rainy to go over to the, to the range. So I thought I'd keep it indoors, do a little bit of plinking inside the garage here today. And I wanted to do a video on these two, well, it'll be three pistols. Uh, one of them belongs to me. The other one belongs to channel subscriber Robin. Sent them over to me to uh, get resealed up. And I have them all fixed up. <clears throat> so we're going to play around with them a little bit and I'll send them on back over. Um, so uh, mine is actually a different model. Mine is a model 137. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of uh, kind of a little history lesson, I guess you could say. Uh, a little bit of uh, looking at the different features that may have been different over the years. So mine is a very early one from what I've found uh, researching online. A couple of things that stand right out real quick is um, this one has, uh, so mine has a machined uh, rear sight. Uh, you can see it's into a dovetail there and it's a machined piece. Both of these ones from Robin uh, actually have this stamped steel rear sight, which is fine. It gets the job done. Um, <clears throat> another thing is, if you notice the trigger guard on this one, the opening in the trigger guard is almost a perfect circle there. And uh, just a different shape. And this one has wood grips and also the... The bottom of the handle is flat at the bottom. So now both of these are, I'll just show you, uh, the grips and stuff are similar. There's a few differences with those, these two as well, but um, so now this one has a different, you can see it has a different opening on the trigger guard and the, the screw is uh, sitting proud of the metal. On these older ones, the screws were recessed and also on the back, the screws are recessed. On this one, the screw is, is proud uh, of the trigger housing. This one has uh, plastic scales. The other one from Robin has plastic scales as well. And then the last thing is the bottom of the grip is swept up just a little bit. Um, just a tiny bit of angle upwards on the back there. Uh, the actual grip angle is still the same but the uh, so those are the differences so now mine <clears throat> could be as early as after doing some research with these I thought it was a little bit newer than it could possibly be but this one could be as old as 1942 um, both of these ones have serial numbers on them and they didn't start putting serial numbers on them until 1947 or 57 1957 <clears throat> this one a lot of those features like the grip handle and stuff came uh, a lot sooner than 1957 I, I believe I found that they switched over to that grip handle in like 1948 or 49 so this one could be as new as 1948 or 49 but it it could be as old as 1942, which is when they started making this model. So mine's a 137, shooting 177 caliber pellets. Both of these ones are 132s, and uh, they shoot 22 caliber pellets. They also did have a model, uh, model 130 that was a BB, intended for BBs. I would imagine that would have been a smooth bore. I'm not 100% sure about that. But uh, so now the two that I have here that are 132s. So this one has like a uh, fake wood uh, plastic grips, uh, is all in brass, still has the wooden pump handle. And uh, so now this, this one here uh, has kind of a nickel finish on it. A lot of it's wore off, but that's okay. Um, this one has these uh, kind of white, whitish gray plastic grips. I, I kind of like those. I have another pistol that has similar to that. This one still has the wood up front. So now, 
1957, like we said a minute ago, Benjamin started putting serial numbers on all of these guns. So this one has a serial number of B123000 uh, XXX. I just don't need to say the whole thing, but for the sake of this discussion, it's 123,000, which puts this serial number on this one as a 1970 production. So that's pretty cool. We can nail it down that close. Um, this is a really good shooting gun. It did need a rebuild kit. Got uh, re Actually, I've rebuilt all three of these. I uh, got the rebuild kits from Henry Ford. Really cool. So if you get that rebuild kit from Henry Ford, if you're going to do one of these and you don't have one already, he does have these. There's a special, special tool. You can see that's a square notch on that end. And then on this end, there's a threaded uh, insert there. And you need this tool to be able to take this gun apart, these guns apart. This will also work for Benjamin and Sheridan pump-up guns from back in the, well, 60s and 70s and 80s, I guess. They made these up until 1983, from what I understand, and then uh, discontinued them. So this one here, uh, I would have, just by looking at them without, I would have guessed this one would have been older. But this one actually is getting closer to end of production, actually. Uh, per the serial number, this one's B229,000, 229,000. And uh, that puts the production on this one as 1978. So uh, pretty, pretty much later in the production. Um, these both shoot great now. Uh, I'm going to just play around with them here. Plinking with a can couple cans I got down across the garage here. One other thing I did notice, just as a to kind of point them out, so my old gun and the one from 1970 uh, both have solid roll pins, uh, two roll pins holding the front pump grip on, and this newer one actually has uh, rolled steel uh, roll pins, and uh, not a not a big deal either. Just uh, an interesting observation. Let's go ahead and take a few shots and then we'll get on out of here so I got I do have a few more guns over there from Robin as well to take care of still shoot at the green can on the left oh this one was missing the safety detent and spring and uh, that little tiny spring is very, very tough to to find. So I actually took a spring out of a, a click pen that's got the really, really fine wire. And uh, you take your 0 .0, 0 0.050 smallest uh, Allen wrench that, that I have. And if you wind that, if you, you know, first you have to take that ball pen spring and straighten the spring the wire straight out and then you wrap it real tight around that 0 .050 <clears throat> Allen wrench it will uh, make a nice little spring tight enough to go into that hole and then I used a uh, number seven steel shot uh, for the detent ball and uh, it worked really well got plenty of punch now let's take a look at this other one this is the 1970 version so the 1970 version also has the screws on the trigger guard uh, standing proud and not set in all right let's hit that same can Pretty good, pretty good power. I think Robin's going to be pleased with these. Let's uh, hit that other can.
Not bad. Let me shoot a couple out of mine. So this one's a 177, so I was shooting Crossman Premier Hollow Points, 14.3s out of the two 22 caliber ones. I didn't have a tin of Crossman's in the garage. My pellet uh, assortment is out in the car, ready to go to the range, but because it's raining, not going to the range. So I've got some uh, Benjamin single dies here, very close proximity to the, very similar in size and trajectory as a Crossman Premier Hollow Point for sure. Lots of fun. Love shooting these old guns. The older the better. My whole uh, kind of fascination started out with old old 22s, which I'm still very much into. But uh, I never really paid much attention to air guns until COVID came around and then Everything was locked down and I couldn't do anything, so I got out here in the garage and out in the backyard and started playing around with the pellet guns and now look. <laughs> Very fun. So these aren't difficult to rebuild. A uh, couple of little couple little tricks. So in order to get the front pump cup out, it's actually very easy if you know the secrets. On these ones, there's actually a little screw on the front here. You wanna take that out. That actually locks the roll pin in that is the pump pivot. Once you get that out, that'll actually press out without even using a, <clears throat> without even using a uh, punch usually. So you can push that out with a, well, you, you use a punch, but you don't have to use a hammer with the punch. Um, all three of these that would push right out. Once you get that out, then you want to take this little cap out the end. And uh, then when then you bring out the, uh, the pump arm, the pump uh, rod in there, bring it out so you can see the pin inside of this uh, same opening. Because it won't come out the front because there's actually a, uh, it's it's solid across the, the tip there and so you have to bring it out to where you're right there now they won't line up perfectly but you want to line them up so that it's lined up right in the bottom and then you take like a dental pick or something really small like that because it won't be lined up perfectly on the top so you won't be able to get a punch in there but you push that you can push that right out too then you can take the pump arm off and then the uh pump cup and pump arm will come out the front and you can replace that uh, if you need to. Oh. Did I forget to pump it up? I think I might have pumped it once. I guess I must have forgot to pump it up. Yeah. So, so anyway, that's uh, I think maybe somebody in the past may not have known how to work that little deal because there is a little bit of damage right there on the brass there. Uh, so not a big deal. Doesn't hurt the gun. Just kind of hurts its uh, street appeal, I guess you'd say. <laughs> I really fully expected that this one would be much older than than that one there just by the looks of it but uh, I was wrong <laughs> so anyway there you go that is a pretty cool look just doing some plinking but uh, let you guys know uh, these Benjamins were made for a long long time uh, like 41 years they were in production uh, with very very little change actually uh, just really just this this grip lower grip and the sights uh, was really the ma only major changes with these so 
Hope you guys liked the video. Till next time, have a great day.